Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing water, or actually the origin of water here on planet Earth. And specifically we're talking about a new study that seems to have uncovered another potential source from which water might have come. A somewhat unlikely source as a matter of fact. That source being our sun itself. So the study that, as always, you can find in the description below, presents a pretty strong argument that at least some of the water might have actually come from the sun. And that, of course, needs a bit of an explanation because, as you probably know, sun is mostly made out of hydrogen. But to start, let's discuss the idea of the origin of water still being a bit of a mystery. Now, for many years, for many decades, the scientists thought that maybe it came from various asteroids and various comets. As a matter of fact, comets were the primary assumed source simply because of the amount of water present on their surface and inside of them. But then we got to visit some of these comets, including the famous 67P comet, and during the Rosetta mission, the scientists have discovered that the water present here was a little bit different. It wasn't the same water as what we have on planet Earth. And to be more exact, it was the difference in the isotope composition of water itself. So here on Earth, water generally has three very specific isotopes in a very specific ratio that's only present here on planet Earth. And that's in terms of mass. In reality, you actually have six different isotopes based on how heavy the oxygen and how heavy the hydrogen are as well. But investigating comets, the scientists discovered a completely different ratio there. Which of course suggested to the scientists that it's most likely that some of the water came from somewhere else, or possibly even most of the water on Earth was not from comets. Now the next obvious explanation would be asteroids and cosmic dust, but to date only in some of the asteroids the isotopes sort of matched, but unfortunately there are just not enough of them around to explain the amount of water on planet Earth. And the asteroids we usually refer to as the carbonaceous chondrites seem to match the best but these represent only roughly around 5% of all of the asteroids that fall on our planet. So the numbers here just don't add up. Something other than asteroids should also be producing some of the other water, possibly even most of it. Now, one of the bigger explanations from a few years ago did not look for the solution in outer space. It actually looked for the solution inside the planet. And this explanation or this proposition that you can watch in one of the older videos suggested that a lot of the water probably came from within the planet, from the minerals that already had water when the planet was just created. For example, one of these minerals that's well known to actually have a lot of water on the inside is the mineral located approximately a thousand kilometers underneath the surface of planet Earth and it's known as ring woodite. But unfortunately, these propositions are somewhat difficult to prove, mostly because we can't just go inside the planet and measure how much water is potentially stored there. And so even though the explanation was quite unique and also explained the potential origin of water, it was almost impossible to scientifically prove this, unless of course we find a way to study Ringwoodite in its natural setting and see how much water it stores on, for example, some other planet or in some other environment. So far this hasn't really been possible and most of the Ringwoodite is usually studied in a very limited lab situation. And so without knowing the exact composition of isotopes inside the planet itself, it would be basically impossible for us to prove this idea. Okay, well now we seem to have another proposition, and this proposition takes us back to outer space. With the main origin of all of this being the solar wind itself, the extremely charged particles that come from the sun and essentially represent tiny hydrogen molecules, with the origin of this water being the solar wind. The wind itself, of course, composed of various charged hydrogen particles. But this is not a new proposition at all. This paper from 2012 was already able to show that certain types of hydrogen ions can actually react with various rocks, various silicate minerals, which would then result in the production of tiny amounts of water on the surface and even inside of the silicates. But in this case, the recent paper proposes that a lot of the solar wind in this case could actually interact with tiny dust particles and also tiny asteroids and possibly even big asteroids, producing various amounts of water on their surface. But more specifically, it proposes that a lot of water can be formed in a lot of other types of asteroids that haven't really been studied to date very thoroughly just yet. In other words, they suggest that it's not just carbonaceous chondrites that could deliver water, it's also cosmic dust and potentially some other types of asteroids that have generally been believed to be water-free, but in reality they might have contained water somewhere on their surface or somewhere else inside of them that has actually not been detected. 
And in this particular case, they focused on the studies of samples taken from this beautiful asteroid known as Itokawa, the samples that were returned to Earth back in 2011 by JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. And this was of course the first asteroid retrieval mission that was also known as Hayabusa, but this was Hayabusa 1. Very recently, Japan also succeeded with the Hayabusa 2 mission. But this here is what's known as an S-type asteroid. Asteroids that are known to be relatively high in density and contain mostly just simple rocks. And so the scientists in the study wanted to see if this asteroid could also be a potential source of certain types of water, but specifically they wanted to investigate the samples for the presence of water right on the surface of these samples that would be similar to the composition of the solar wind itself. Specifically, they were really looking for the uh, isotopes of hydrogen. Here they used a very, very rigorous technique known as atom probe tomography. It's essentially a technique developed back in 1967 where an extremely precise measurements of each individual atoms can actually provide extremely accurate composition of a certain sample and even create a three-dimensional image of what happens inside the sample as well. And so by applying this technique to the samples from the asteroid, they've discovered that the surface of the samples contain various water and hydroxide molecules, with most of the enrichment being on the surface itself, suggesting that it was most likely created by a lot of hydrogen coming from the sun itself which, by bombarding the asteroid over billions of years, very likely inserted a lot of these molecules relatively deep inside the surface, which then turned into water that stayed there for a long time. But more importantly, all of this was discovered at just the right depth, where the scientists theoretically predicted all of this to exist. And because in this case this water was much lighter in terms of its mass, it, it was a lighter isotope, this very likely added to the total content of water on planet Earth, along with some of the other sources. In other words, the water in these asteroids was very likely just an additional source, it wasn't really the entire source. But because it would also be present in a lot of different particles, such as cosmic dust and a lot of smaller particles hitting our planet pretty much every second, given billions of years, this would add up to a relatively large content of water accumulating on the surface of Earth. And the study also suggests that in a typical S-type asteroid, it would actually contain approximately 20 liters of water for every cubic meter of rock, which, based on the total mass of the asteroids in the solar system, may explain where some of the or a lot of the water on Earth possibly came from. But this also explains something else about the water in other locations, for example, the Moon. One of the bigger mysteries in the last few decades was the discovery of a lot of water deposits on the surface of the moon in various locations where it was believed to not exist. And so this would be an explanation for how a lot of this water could also be produced on the moon, which means that future explorations of the moon could maybe use this to extract some of the water. On top of this, because some of this water is produced underneath the top layer, it's actually protected from a lot of other elements, and so it can remain inside these rocks for a pretty long time which makes some of these asteroids a potential source of future water for, for example, when we start traveling across the solar system or possibly even between stars. For example, some of the space missions in the future could maybe harvest the cosmic dust and smaller asteroids and then extract water from within them. Which of course means that in some of the future missions, maybe the astronauts wouldn't even have to bring that much water with them. They can just harvest it directly from space itself. And this would also be the case for the surface of the moon. If we can find a way to extract the water from here, we'll be able to create a functioning colony. But this also means that maybe some of the other stars that produce even more solar wind could maybe produce more water. Now that's something that we're not going to know until future studies and until very thorough investigations of other planets and other star systems, but it's a really interesting proposition. For example, in the TRAPPIST-1 system, all of the planets and of course all of the asteroids here are bombarded with way way more solar wind coming from the parent star. And this could mean maybe more water. Or at least based on the study and based on our understanding of how hydrogen ions can potentially form water molecules. But only future studies will tell what's happening here and if there's actually any liquid water on the surface of those planets. And also ironically some of the previous studies about TRAPPIST-1 that discovered that it has something like 100 times more solar wind than our own solar system, suggested that the strength of the solar wind could potentially strip everything from the surface of these planets, including of course water and including of course atmosphere. And so at the end of the day, it might actually come down to having some sort of a balance. 
The solar wind has to be strong enough, but not too strong. But that's of course just a speculation for now. No studies have been conducted just yet. But anyway, it's definitely a really interesting discovery and definitely a different way for us to see our sun. It looks like it's also a provider of water, not just energy. But we'll learn more about this in some of the future studies and we'll definitely come back and talk about this in some of the future videos as well. Either way, thank you so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy this, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, or by joining the channel membership, or maybe buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.